So our first reading uh, today is from the Acts of the Apostles, and it speaks of this issue, this problem that existed in the early church. There's this transition from Judaism, so the Lord appeared to Jews, his disciples were Jews, uh, the people they were speaking to for the most part were Jews. Uh, So then when they were converting then to Christianity or changing, kind of taking the step into Christianity, the step from Judaism into recognizing Jesus as the Messiah, were they obliged to follow Jewish customs and laws or not? As in, is this faith that Jesus has started, is it, is it Judaism with a few extra bits or is it, is it something different? Right? So like, is it Judaism but you're baptized as well, so you're circumcised and baptized and then believe in Jesus and then uh, follow his commands and Moses' commands? You know, you can understand like, it's, 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 it's not the easiest of transitions because the Old Testament is still right and still true and it's still good, still should be followed. Uh, and yet, what we have here with the Lord is something new. It is a new revelation. It's different. So how do we, how do we resolve this? How do you kind of keep the boat, how do you keep them both together? Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, Mosaic law and, uh, and, and, and Jesus law, which doesn't do away with the old law, of course, but how do you maintain this balance? How do you maintain it? Not so easy. So some argue, yes, they should be circumcised first. They should be Jews first and then once they're, they're Jews, then they can be they can be baptized afterwards, and then um, you're you're a Christian. Others said, "Well, is it necessary to be circumcised, though? Surely, baptism is is sufficient." And then, so this is this was the, the discussion. Now, why is this important? Um, we have an issue. We have lots of good people here. Like we have the the, the early church, the early uh, the, the, the church just after the that the Lord has ascended, right? So these are the people who have walked with Jesus and heard him speak and seen his miracles. And they still have to discuss things and work things out, right? So it's not, it's not all automatic, plain obvious. Sometimes things have, we have to kind of sit down and work through a problem. And just when I was reading this this morning, I, I was reminded of, of something that Father Paul, the founder of my community, says on a regular basis. And that is that there is no problem that hasn't a solution in love. There's no problem that hasn't got a solution in love. So if the apostles sit around and their goal is we want to discern God's will here, we want to do God's will. It's not that I want to be right, I started on this side of the line, so by God I'll stay on that side of the line till the end. No, I've started on that side of the line and I've proposed my arguments. Maybe I'm wrong. It's, 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 It's an actual possibility. It's a possibility. I could be wrong. And then we allow the, the spirit and the inspiration of God to, to persuade us or to guide us to, to the truth. So some people, people who are very well-meaning to know we must maintain the law of Moses. And then as it turns out, no, that, that it's, while yes, we still follow Moses to a degree, no, circumcision isn't necessary. Some of the ordinances that Moses asked us to obey, we don't need to. We don't need to. So, but this, this, this decision, that they came to it in, in love, not that everyone's seeking their own, I have to be right, I've started here, so I'm going to stay there till the bitter end. No, I, I, we want to do God's will. And so then it's, it just, it's matched up perfectly with our gospel today. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. Remain in my love. So all these decisions, and, and daily, on a daily basis, we make so many decisions or so much is asked of us, or as regards our faith, how our faith applies to real life and to all of these decisions that we have to make, it's, it, it's, it can be a bit head spinning at times because we don't always have immediate clarity on what we're supposed to do. Remain in my love. There is no problem that hasn't a solution in love. Now, it doesn't mean that the solution will be immediate, that you know, as soon as you say that in your head, voila, solution uh, will, will, will appear. I mean, there are, there are family problems where there are problems with in-laws or, or family members as regards inheritance, you know, there's, uh, where there's a will, there's a war. Uh, so, you know, who gets the house, who gets the land, who gets the garage, who gets the factory, who gets, you know, <laughs> every will, like, it's, it can split a, a family four ways from Sunday. So, awful. Can, uh, these kind of things can happen. So, there's no, I'm not saying it's necessarily easy but there is no problem that hasn't a solution in love. Keeping in mind also the big picture. Eventually we have to leave everything here anyway. 
to sometimes we might actually have to lose, maybe financially or maybe even reputation, which is unfortunate, but may have to happen, uh, in order to maintain peace, in order to remain in love. That this can happen. I heard a story recently of uh, the Sisters of Life in the United States, and they were talking about uh, Sister Bethany Madonna. She was talking about a particular couple that she knew, um, Matt and his fiancée, who has a name. Rosie, Roisin. Lucy. Thank you. So Matt and Lucy. Matt and Lucy. And um, they, were, they were well known to the sisters. They were loved. They were fun-loving. Uh, they, were, they were a good practicing couple. Um, and they were faithful. They were chaste. You know, it was just, they were just lovely company to be around. They were just such a model example of, of a couple. And then when they, they, they got engaged, all the sisters were gushing. And, oh, my goodness, look at the ring. It's so whatever, big or small or whatever it's supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, all more than wonderful. So anyway, they, 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 they get engaged. And uh, they're, they're due to be married. All good. During this period, though, uh, Matt discovers that he has cancer and has to go for treatment. So during this period of engagement, Matt is actually undergoing uh, his, his, his chemo treatment. And the, they decide to, to, to go ahead with the marriage nonetheless. But they'd have to actually skip the honeymoon because of, of, of Matt's cancer treatment. So uh, well done to them. They, did, they, they, they decided to go ahead with it anyway. Okay. Shortly afterwards, though, um, Lucy discovers that, that she's pregnant, which is wonderful news on one hand. But the doctors were saying, well, considering Matthew is having cancer treatment at the time, there's a, a chance of uh, fetal abnormality, so we would recommend an abortion. And Lucy says, no, that won't be happening. And Matt says, no, no, we're going ahead with it anyway. So you can imagine a certain amount of fear and trepidation because it's, if, pre pregnancy is, is challenging enough and difficult enough and fearful enough. It's a, it's, it's, it's a scary thing at the best of times. But if it's the added concern that uh, the child could have all sorts of, you know, just very serious needs afterwards, that can radically change then how your life will be lived or your career, or where, you, where you're going to live. You're going, you're going to live near your family. You're going to need extra help. Uh, a, a very difficult decision. But they decided to go ahead with the pregnancy anyway. And so when the wee baby was born, there was a, a slight abnormality. The two fingers in the center of his hand were fused to his palm. So when he was born, he came out with his hand like this, <laughs> which in sign language is I love you. Aww. So he was born like this. So he comes out of the womb saying, love you guys. <laughs> That's just awesome. That's just, it's just, there's no problem that doesn't have a solution in love. Little flick of a scalpel and the fingers were, were freed and he was fine. There is no problem that doesn't have a solution in love. It may be hard, it may take time, it may not be immediate, but there is no problem that hasn't a solution in love. Remain in my love. And I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Let us not worry. Let us entrust everything to the Lord. All of our problems, our difficulties, our challenges, our families, our illnesses, uh, all the, the, the decisions that we have to make on any given day. We entrust everything to the Lord, knowing that he wants our happiness, our joy. He wants us to be free. Lord, may we remain in you and make all of our decisions out of love for you. Amen.